until after the presentation. Um, although I could do it. The pictures on the handout are in black and white, but you can see see everything. So, but if you're okay, I'll uh, uh, I'll just do this, and then we'll have the handout. Uh, that, that's slide. that slide. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Rossboro to the Bahamas. <laughs> Before I begin, I just want to say something um, because I'm standing next to Valerie, who lived in the Bahamas for 40 years, and Jackie, who was born and raised in the Bahamas, and I've only visited there twice with a total probably of about four months. There. So if I say something that's not you have it the perspective of taking your Rossboro to the Bahamas, so you have it the perspective of, of how it's everybody else would be. Okay, let me share a few facts uh, for the Bahamas, but I've told both uh, Valerie and Jackie that feel free to correct me along the way. Uh, depending on what you read, the Bahamas has, has either 14 or 16 major island groups, and I've read 750 islands, I've also read 2,000, and I think I'd put it in the 2,000 category. Uh, population is around 400,000, two-thirds of whom live in Nassau, uh, the largest city by far, and there are another 50,000, 60,000 in Freeport, where you live for a while, right? Um, and it was just interesting, uh, as we traveled around the island talking to different people, when uh, you're going to give birth, Everyone, they would always go to Nassau, where the, where the hospitals are. And, uh, so that was just interesting. Uh, air and water temperature is uh, usually in that 70 to 80 degree range year round. At the higher end, uh, in the warmer months. Uh, we've been there uh, December uh, through March. And uh, a typical day would be, it would get down to 60 seven or so at night and during the day be around 78 water temperature around 74 being from Maine 74 was just you know, <laughs> warm, warmer weather you and a couple of little later uh, great cruising and I don't know if you can see on here but these are the major island groups but if you look at this uh, kind of a light gray color as opposed to the blue that light gray color are the banks around the uh, Bahamian Islands. And typical water depth is plus or minus 10 feet. And so you never have to, uh, well, you certainly could, but I would never, I've never anchored in more than 15 feet of water. Uh, beautiful turquoise water, as you'll see some pictures here. Uh, pristine white sand, and you've actually got the, uh, on the little throw, you get some uh, pinkish sand beaches. Uh, if you're uh, fishing, your permit to go to the Bahamas includes a fishing permit. And there are a lot of people in Florida, particularly with these fast sports fishing boats, that will head over just for a day trip uh, to the Bahamas. Uh, snorkeling, uh, we brought our snorkeling gear and used it regularly. Just some wonderful snorkeling opportunities. And it's only 50 to 60 miles off the Florida coast which is kind of amazing, you know, and I'll talk a little more about weather. You've got to pick your weather window, but you can be in a foreign country in three hours uh, on a Rossboro, and probably uh, uh, John could be there in two. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the dollar is uh, readily accepted throughout. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. If you do pay something in U.S. dollars, your change is going to be in Bahamian currency. Uh, and uh, I would say the Bahamas are as safe as the U.S. You need to be conscious I mean, where you are. I mean, obviously, if you're in Nassau, you're going to take different precautions than if you're on some uh, small island. But I, I would say it's as safe as the U.S. <laughs> and uh, contrary to what you may say, in my mind, food and fuel are readily available. Uh, pardon me? Well, the, uh, on the food thing, and this is, to me, this is some of the fun in being in a foreign land, is, you know, learning from, you know, we knew when the boat came in. If the boat came in on Wednesday, we were going to do our shopping on Wednesday. Uh, but we, uh, in our four months, 
always had fresh food uh, and never had a problem. The, uh, this just shows you our roots. I don't know how much you can see. Black is the route that we did in 2016-17, where we left from Key Biscayne, went over to Bimini, to the Berries, to Nassau, to the Exumas down to Stanley Key, back up through uh, Grand Bahama, and we came ashore at, I think it was uh, West Palm. And then uh, in uh, 2020, we left from Lower Key Biscayne to Bimini, went down to Andros, cut over to the uh, Exumas down to Georgetown, and then over to Eleuthera, and then uh, uh, back through Nassau, the Berries, Bimini, and ended up at Fort Lauderdale. And we were racing uh, back, as it turned out, because this was the middle of March of last year, and you know, nobody knew what was going to happen. So I'm going to show some pictures, uh, and when you get your handout, you'll see them in black and white, and just to, just sharing our experience, which on some of the islands is limited. But here is Bimini. We love Bimini. Uh, there are a couple places you can go, a uh, multiple places you can go. But uh, Alice Town, it's a you know you're in a foreign country in Alice Town, but it's a friendly place and a lot of good walking. Uh, this is, when you, when you get to the Bahamas, you know by the color of the water. It's just <laughs> something special. Uh, the next picture is us at the, the um, um, Bimini uh, Blue Water uh, Marina, which is where we stayed. Uh, this is in Alice Town, the main street. Uh, one of the uh, nearby places is Honeymoon Harbor. Here we are with... Uh, um, um, Gosh, my mind's gone blank. What is this? Not a skate. What is that? It's stingray. Stingray. Uh, at your feet. We talked to some people there and said, if, if you move slowly, they'll come and nibble your leg and no problem at all. <laughs> and uh, we anchored off uh, um, Harbor Island at the kayaking and that's us our boat at the dock. We walked um, from one end of uh, North Bimini to the other, at the north end now, there's a this super resort complex that built a thousand foot pier uh, that was uh, just opening up when we left. But the southern end is what we liked. We took the ferry to South Bimini. We actually uh, walked all the way to the airport, and there's another marina there that uh, uh, some people go to. But to me, Alice Town is a place to go. We, our, our first trip, we actually, uh, went ashore at uh, uh, Cat Key, which is a private resort, which has its own custom flag. But Alice Town is what I like. Uh, Grand Bahama, I'm not taking these in any particular order. So our experience in Grand Bahama is rather limited. Uh, we did go through, uh, which was ended up being the biggest boondoggle project in Bahamian history, the uh, uh, Grand or Great Lacan Waterway which is a canal cutting right through the center of Grand Bahama. The idea was to make Grand Bahama the Venice of the, uh, of the West. Uh, they sold house lots, and there are a few unbelievable houses that were built. This here is a hotel that was never finished. And here is some of the uh, uh, dredging equipment that just, uh, they abandoned it. We went through the, there, and then we made our way to um, to West End, which is on, again, on the West End, the closest to the U.S. from Grand Bahama. But we had to go through an inlet, and we weren't prepared for the fact that there were eight-foot almost breakers at this inlet, and uh, we edged up to the inlet, and when the when we were in Port Fritz Wells, I turned around and we had to figure out what we were going to do. I, just, I hadn't <coughs> prepared for this. There was another inlet about 40 miles north. We could have gone back the way we came, uh, but it was 4 o'clock at night. It was going to be dark in an hour. And uh, at that point, two 60-foot fishing, sports fishing boats came through. And I talked to them on the radio and said, we're going to follow you through. 
and you know I didn't I didn't know what we were gonna we were gonna make it. We saw them. The water was crashing over their fly bridges, <laughs> and we followed them and were. Uh, they said we were completely out of the water on two occasions. <laughs> so we made it to West End, which is a, a very nice marina, but that's our limited exposure to Grand Bahamas. Uh, there are some resorts on the uh, southern shore of Grand Bahama. By and large, uh, uh, if you're not there for fishing, it's kind of just a staging point. Uh, if you were going to go to the Abacos, many people check in at West End and then go north to go to the Abacos. Uh, the Abacos is one chain that we haven't been to because of hurricanes and then COVID came along. Uh, Andros Island. Andros uh, is one of our favorite spots, but it's off the beaten path. And when I propose some trips you're going to take, I don't have Andros on this list, but if you're adventuresome, go to Andros. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we met, and I don't know if you, the name Eugene Campbell means anything to you, but he is a well-known uh, motel operator uh, in uh, Nicholstown, and he served as our tour guide, and here he, we are at his motel. And, until COVID came, he uh, 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 would bring groups in from all over the Bahamas, uh, uh, school groups and also from the states. <coughs> here we're at the, uh, uh, the Androsia factory where they do the, uh, uh, the dyeing of the cloth. Uh, here we met a gentleman who runs a, a, a conch restaurant and he prepared the conch salad right in front of us. Uh, when we went to the Bahamas, we took three tubs of uh, school supplies. And I, I uh, thanks so much because uh, uh, Mike and Melissa Reed, who, where are you guys? Uh, right over there. They went shopping with us and made a contribution to it. So we filled these tubs and you know, our boat was already full. And we would uh, put them in the V-berth at night, and then uh, during the day, they'd take another place. But anyway, we visited schools, and we visited three schools. And one of them was in Red Bays, and that's us with the whole school and the principal. Red Bays is on the uh, northwestern coast of Andros Island. And this is just, these are the types of stories that when you're cruising, you find out about it. You just shake your head. Back in the 1830s, the U.S. government had a campaign to uh, either get the uh, Seminole Indians in Florida to, to move west or to annihilate them. And um, beginning in the 1830s, a group of Seminole Indians and some runaway slaves went by boat from Florida to Redbacks. And that community was undiscovered for almost 100 years. <laughs> Isn't that an unbelievable story? And so uh, uh, many of these are, are descendants of, of Seminole Indians and uh, former American slaves. Uh, here's us at the, uh, 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 the pier in Nicholstown. Uh, we're next, we're, we're in the fishing boats. And uh, I remember I treated two workers on this boat to a couple of beers, and uh, uh, I gave them five bucks to watch our, our boat, and they gave us unbelievable attention for the, for the week that we were here. Uh, here is, uh, in Red Bays, we bought some of the, uh, the weaving is just exquisite, it's just unbelievable. And then while we were there, we got invited to go to a, a Baptist church, we were the only whites in the church, and it was they greeted us with open arms and hugs and said prayers for us, and it was just a wonderful experience. And the, that, to me, is the, the type of thing that my wife and I, we look for in learning about other places. The Berry Islands. Um, and when I talk to uh, about some proposed trips, I'm going to mention the Berries again, but... Uh, this was, after we left Bimini, this, our, on our first trip, this was where we went. Uh, it was an 80 mile shot from um, Honeymoon Harbor where we anchored to the northern tip of the berries all over the bank. 
So as you're going along, you see bottom the whole way. I mean, it's just, it's just un unbelievable. Uh, now, on the northern end, and you can't really make this out, but this is an island that uh, the, the beach was manufactured. They've got a water slide. So basically, this is where uh, some of the cruise ships, like Disney Lines, have bought these islands. They have made it in the image they want it to be, with this perfect paradise island. And they'll anchor off there and uh, ferry people ashore. So that was just, and, and that's not the only one in, in the Bahamas. Um, this is a, a famous cock restaurant um, in Flo's Cock Shop, which is uh, in the berries. And uh, one of the nice things, and you probably have experienced this as well, is that when you go into an anchorage, uh, and, and I'll talk about some of the marinas too, but anchoring is what it's at, I think, in the Bahamas. You meet other boats, and this was a Canadian couple that spoke uh, limited English. Uh, but we kind of, we went uh, snorkeling with them because Molly was a little apprehensive. Um, somebody, she, she was worried about the sharks, and someone had told her, "Oh, if a shark comes, you just bop them in the nose." And she didn't think that was the way she wanted to learn about swimming. Uh, but we uh, went uh, and had a couple of nice meals there. Here is uh, off one of the islands. We anchored. You can see surf in the distance. This is the. Uh, um, one of the, the blue hole in, um, I can't remember the name of the key, uh, got a Hopkins uh, key blue hole. Uh, and uh, you can actually go swimming there, although we didn't. Uh, this is a picture of the conch shop. We anchored in this bay for three or four days, and the mouth of the bay is uh, like two, two and a half feet at low tide. So you've got to be a small draft boat. And I'll remember when we left, it was low tide, and it was soft sand. We, we touched the bottom, and we would go from the bow of the boat to the stern of the boat and work our way out. <laughs> Nothing but a rock, bro. Yeah, that's right. Uh, New Providence is the name of the, uh, of the island that Nassau is on. And um, in, in some respects, because we were meeting family uh, at Paradise Island, you know, with all that uh, fluff that goes on there. I wish we had spent more time in, uh, uh, in not Nassau proper. But we did walk across the beach, uh, walk, walk rather the, uh, the big uh, bridge here, and um, went to the local market, which is kind of under the, bit of the bridge, and we could buy fish and everything. That was, that was neat. Um, this is a picture of a very fancy resort. And I, the only reason we have it is that uh, John Conway, who is a Rossborough owner uh, and was very helpful to us, uh, invited us to his club. It's called the One and Only Club. And I remember uh, while we were there, and if I recall, it's, it's only around three or 4,000 a night, but there was a seven night minimum. Uh. <laughs> uh, but he told us some stories about some of the dignitaries that, that he stayed with. That was quite interesting. So we met family for uh, Christmas, and there are uh, eight of us. Uh, we celebrated right on our Rossboro, and we had the boat uh, decked out here a little bit. We had a little Christmas tree on it. This is, you know, Atlantis, the, the water slide that goes through the, the chart channel. And yeah, it was fun. Um, and then these are just examples of the cruise ships in, in the harbor. It's just an unbelievable harbor. You actually have to, uh, when you go into the harbor, you have, you're expected to radio, and they'll give you permission or not to go through. And we, that particular day, we had to wait while a, a boat was coming. The Exumas. The Exumas are, um, in my mind, the ultimate destination for some of them wanting to go to the Bahamas. And uh, we spent the bulk of part of our time there. And I've got that island chain divided into three full sections here. So north, um, we uh, uh, have been there twice. But our most recent trip, we shot from Andros right over to the top key in, in, the, uh, in the island chain. And so we're off this beach. We're the only boat. 
and it's just heaven. And we 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 uh, do a lot of tandem kayaking. My wife and I still have a good relationship, so we can do those types of things. But uh, you know, we there was a channel uh, inside the island that went way up. Um, Another uh, key that's uh, in the northern part is uh, Allen's Key, where they've got the iguanas. And as your dinghy is approaching the shore, all the iguanas are coming out down to you because people, we didn't feed them, but people do feed them. Uh, this one here is about three feet long. That was the largest one we saw. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, marinas we've been to twice because we uh, wanted to celebrate our anniversary at a very nice restaurant. This is Highborn Key, and uh, just a, a picture perfect a place to be. And then uh, this picture is on uh, I have to think now. What's it? Uh, Norman's Pond Key. This is an interesting story. So Norman's Pond, there's a pond within the key itself, and it's a very big anchor. This was a, a, a sun um, a sunset that was just absolutely gorgeous. And um, back in the 80s, Norman's Pond, the whole key was bought by a drug dealer. <laughs> and for a while, the Bahamian government, and there may have been payoffs there, I don't know, uh, tolerated them, and they would fly drugs in and out, in and out of those like, airstrip and what have you. Um, I think uh, uh, after some pressure, I'm not sure of U.S. or otherwise, but he was, the, the drug pin was arrested and uh, it was interesting just seeing some of the remnants of, of their activity and of his house. But there's a real nice restaurant here uh, at McDuff's that we walked to and another uh, sailing couple. We, it, it, most of the people we meet in the, the men in the Bahamas are sailing actually. And the majority of them are from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's maybe different right now. This couple was actually from Michigan. We did a, did a lot with them. So heading south on the extreme, <coughs> pro probably the high point uh, in terms of natural beauty is pulling into the the anchorage. Although they've got mooring balls because they do, they prohibit anchoring in this sensitive area, is the Exuma Land and Sea Park. Uh, there are hiking trails, there are um, great places to snorkel, unbelievable beaches. Uh, this is uh, our boat uh, off the beach. That, uh, the first picture at the beginning of the presentation was uh, this anchor. Uh, I didn't have a very good underwater camera, but uh, that's just an example of some of the things that we had. Uh, and this was at uh, the key uh, water wells, but there, uh, this group uh, or what makes up the park is about 40 miles in length and numerous <coughs> keys. Uh, this happened to be a shroud key where we anchored in a hurricane hole on one side of the island and spent the better part of a week there waiting for the wind to die down. But we were able to kayak to the other side and we actually spent a day uh, we've got a cart. We spent a day picking up litter on the beach, and we built a big pile here. And um, our, <coughs> the hope is that they were able to take it away because uh, the you know the the windward side of these islands can. You know, I found something that's from a lobster trap that had a main uh, name on it huh. in the Bahamas. Uh, this is a, another one of our favorite islands in the park called uh, Cambridge Key. These are hiking trails, and I actually hiked up to the top of that with some of it. So, what I've termed, uh, labeled uh, Central Exumas, uh, Staniel Key is the most well known of, of the places there. Uh, this is a, a big major. You've probably heard about the pigs. Yeah. Uh, you got to go see the pigs. Um, the um, south of Staniel Key is uh, uh, Black Point, and uh, this is our boat. And I got to sail on one of these Bahamian boats. We were racing each other. And the boat we went on both sides of Salty Pond, so that was kind of weird. 
Uh, off Daniel Key is um, the. Did the, did the uh, pigs swim out to you? Uh, pardon me? Did the pigs swim out to you? No, they did not. In fact, what I'm trying to do here, the, the, the pigs are pretty much on the beach and in and, 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 and the shrub. And I've got a carrot and I'm wearing a glove. And I was trying to get the pig to go in the water. Now, I, I've seen pictures of them swimming, but we didn't see any swimming. What we did see uh, is that there was a teenager in this skimpy bikini eating a bag of chips. And the pigs came over and were letting her know they wanted that bag of chips. And she started running, and these five pigs are running after her. <laughs> she did not drop the bag of chips. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is uh, uh, in Stanley Key. Stanley Key has got, uh, I mean, they're all small, but it has three grocery stores. And this one we're able to take our dinghy to, and the grocery store is right there. And I remember buying a, you know, a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream or hockey oh, ice. We we got two spoons. We ate the whole thing. Right there. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, the neat things. Uh, is a place called Rachel's Bubble Bath. Yeah, and uh, you can kayak to the bath, and basically it's rocks that the surf comes over and creates these bubbles, and we tied a rope to a rock, so you're trying to hang on as the surf is breaking over. That was kind of neat. And the reason I, this is the uh, 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 Little Farmer's Key, the, the marine uh, owner there, and you can't see it, but he's showing a picture of his family that was taken, I think, around 1900. And the interesting thing here is that the, the four patriarchs, four brothers, all white. And everyone else in the picture is black. Well, uh, Great Britain outlawed slavery long before the U.S. did. And uh, they got their land, the Bombers, as, as loyalists. And uh, they realized that if they're going to have families with them, they've got to marry the people that are there. And they were all, uh, uh, many of them were former slaves or, or laborers that uh, came over originally when uh, many uh, Brits left or, or Sympathizers left the United States uh, earlier during the Revolutionary War. So anyway, that was just a, you know, another little interesting tip. Exuma South. So uh, Georgetown is the destination of many, many uh, people in the wintertime. And it's hard to see, but there are probably about 300 boats there, which was down a little bit. Uh, Almost all of them sailboats, and almost all of them are there to s to spend the entire uh, winter there. Uh, they have organized events and what have you, and we didn't really get to be part of that community because our intent was just to you know, pass through three or four days. But it was interesting uh, 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 being part of that. This is the dinghy dock yeah, yeah. in uh, in Georgetown in. You can you know, liquor store, laundromat, grocery store, van, whatever you need, you can, within walking distance of that dinghy dock. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, also, uh, on our way to get down to Georgetown, uh, this is a stainless steel piano in about 15 feet of water, commissioned by David Copperfield on his, his island. So that's me uh, uh, tickling the ivies, so to speak. Uh, 15 feet of water. Uh, there are a number of private islands. Uh, uh, in fact, I just uh, I, I subscribed to a couple of things from the Bahamas, and uh, you know, there was one island for sale for 30 million. This was just an example of one house under construction on, on one island. And this uh, is just a picture of. Uh, uh, you, some of you may have heard of uh, Lee Stocking on, uh, Island, which at one point had a big research center. Below it is Williams Key. They're now combined as one. Uh, but we did a hiking. This is where the highest point in the uh, native be in the Bahamas. Uh, 
So Eleuthera. Eleuthera is considered one of the uh, outer islands. Uh, it's less visited by tourists, although people do go to it. Um, we had wanted to visit other outer islands, but the weather just wouldn't allow us. But we uh, had a wonderful, what we did was we actually went to Cape Eleuthera Marina, which was very nice, and rented a car. And so even though uh, we really couldn't vote because of the weather, we, we basically did the, uh, the whole island. But this was uh, Governor's Harbor Friday night uh, cookout, which is uh, very well known. Um, here is the, uh, what has been known as the glass bridge. It used to be a natural bridge. And one of the nice things about it is that you see the Atlantic Ocean on the left with this deep blue color. And on the right side, you see the Bahamian light, light blue. Uh, while we're on Eleuthera, we stumbled on, uh, and this is where local knowledge can be so helpful, there is a proposed park that has a interior body of water that is partially visited by the ocean. And we ended up uh, going snorkeling there, and there's an octopus in this picture. And in this picture, there's a seahorse. <laughs> so we actually got to see a seahorse. That was kind of, that was kind of cool. And then every night we, uh, um, this is, uh, we're waiting for winter to die down. This is a couple from Texas, and uh, who we've since had up to Maine. Uh, but uh, we each had conch shells that we made a horn. And <laughs> let me tell you, I don't know anything in the world as hard as a conch shell. I had an electric drill, <laughs> and I, I think I, it took me three hours to, Get, get the hole so that we could get a sound of a function. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that, so we visited uh, uh, to varying degrees seven island groups. Other island groups that uh, are on our to-do list are the, the Abaco Islands, Long Island, and Cat Island. Uh, Long and Cat are accessible from Georgetown, weather permitting. Uh, and our intent had been to go to the, uh, the Abacos, uh, going up through uh, Spanish wells uh, in Eleuthera, but uh, weather and COVID get in the way. Islands, uh, the other island groups here are, are, many sailors do visit them, and while we could, uh, they're just, I thought, a little too far for us to want to do that. Now I want to share with you the equipment that we had. Uh, not all of it is necessary, but at least so you get an idea of what we had. We had two independent Garmin chart plotters, and two independent depth uh, meters. I uh, always like having that redundancy on, on those two things. Um, we had an iPad uh, with GPS and Active Captain. And so um, it, it's nice having independent sources, and if you know, if something happened to your power on the boat, then you've got an alternative. Uh, we have uh, radar, uh, and I'll just mention that I don't think radar is is necessary, but I liked it. Like when we were uh, crossing the Gulf Stream, um, sometimes the radar would be the first indication that, oh, there's a ship over there. You know, sometimes your eyes miss things that the radar picked up, but I, I wouldn't say it's necessary. It's nice to have it. Uh, EPIRB, you definitely want to have uh, VHS uh, with uh, DSC, Digital Selective Calling, as you probably all have now. And basically, you push a button on your VHF, and uh, that emergency goes out with your, uh, with your location, that launch dude, as does an EPIRB. Um, another thing that we had is uh, Garmin in Reach. And I won't say that this is necessary, but it was really nice to have. So with Garmin and Reach, uh, I mean, you got to buy the unit. And I don't know what they are now. I think we paid $300 for it. And then um, you need to get a, uh, uh, it didn't used to be Garmin. When we first bought it, it was uh, DeLorem, which is a company actually in Maine. Down the block. Um, you get a monthly contract and you can get different things. So in ours, uh, I think we paid uh, uh, you know, 10, 12 bucks a month, something like that, which gave us 10 free texts anywhere at any time. And you pay over uh, like a dollar fifty texts. The 
on that. But the thing that, so it was a good opportunity to, you know, we could let our girls know. And actually, when we did the Gulf Crossing, which uh, John, you just did, uh, the weather was not good. And uh, every hour, we and another boat would uh, use Garmin Reach to communicate with each other. And also, I alerted uh, family home and gave them automatically the exact flat longitude position so you could kind of follow along. But we used it for weather forecast. Uh, and uh, you can get a nice five-day uh, weather forecast and uh, if you don't have other needs. That was good. Now for us, we, uh, uh, Verizon now is a plan that covers the Bahamas and that's what we did. Uh, I won't say it worked out great. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive. I had to fight with them a little bit on one of the bills. Um, what most people do is they'll you go ashore like you go to Allistown, you can buy a, a, get a SIM card uh, for your phone and this is uh, highly recommended you go online it's called my island Wi-Fi and I saw someone who had a hotspot um, that's what uh, right that's what we have but you can get a my Wi-Fi hotspot and I've heard nothing but rave reviews about it the problem is they have a limited number of hotspots, so you're going to get yours when someone gives up theirs. So we couldn't get one in Allistown, and we knew we were going to be in Andros, but they said they'd fly it to the Andros Air Force Force. Uh, and in hindsight, we should have done it, but we weren't quite sure our time, we didn't do it. So we didn't do it, but my island Wi-Fi is, in fact, they had plans to expand to the states. I don't, I'm not sure where they ended. I know they aren't offering it right now. Where we did have internet service, and I'm going to talk a little more about them, uh, we made extensive use of the Windy app, uh, which, uh, well, we made contributions. Uh, they're free. And also Mars Weather Service. And I'm going to share a little more about that. We also had the Paper Explorer chart books. Uh, Explorer is, I think, generally considered the best chart of, uh, of the Bahamas. And I just, I'm still a little old-fashioned, so even though we had all this electronic stuff, we also had the paper charts. And uh, the waterway guide, uh, which was great for Now, I'm going to give you some examples. These are just to get you thinking. Uh, but I want to start off uh, by saying that it all comes down to weather and weather windows. And if you're on a schedule, you've got to really scale back what you hope so. And my wife, Molly, would be the first to say that we went out at times where had we had more time, we wouldn't have gone. So. I've got across the top, Bimini's, Berries, Nassau, Rose Island, which is an island not far from Nassau, in the Anchorage, North Exumas, the park, Central Exumas, South Exumas, and then this is weather days in the tournament. And what I've done is I've, uh, I've given you some of the highlights for each of these island groups. Again, you're going to get this in hard copy. Some of the marinas. Other than the park, there are marinas, and the marinas invariably have gas and either have themselves or are adjacent to uh, food stores. I mean, just as an example, Highborn Key, which is a high-end marina, um, has a nice little grocery store. It's not big, but you know, we've got fresh steaks and fresh produce, and uh, we didn't mind uh, doing that. So what I've done here is uh, the number so, like, if you wanted to take a five-day trip, I'm not saying you can do it in five days, but if you wanted to do a five-day trip, I'm going to Bimini and Cat Key. You might spend one to two days there, and you're going to have a marina, you've got customs, you've got gas, and you've got food. And then you might spend one or two days at Anchorage. So maybe you go to Allistown, and then you go to Honeymoon Harbor, or something like that. Uh, and then I've allowed two days for weather and return. But it 
could be you could it could be a week. It depends a lot of time of year, and I'm going to show you a little more about them. A 12-day trip. You might spend uh, a couple days in Allistown, a day at Anchorage and Bimini, and then go to the Bears. You're not. Uh, someone on the Great Loop forum uh, posted. I got two weeks. I want to go to the Exumas. You don't go to the Exumas if you only get two weeks. Um, the berries are a wonderful exposure, and you can easily, there's a, a marina at both ends, um, and there's also uh, uh, some great anchorages. And you see how good allocated six days for weather one day. Again, these could be understated. Let's hope they're overstated. In my mind, a 25-day trip is probably the minimum to go to the Exumas, going from Bimini to the Berries, to Nassau. You can stay in Nassau or you can continue on and anchor at the Rose Island. And then you can see different days. And I've allocated nine weather uh, uh, days. And then I also have a 35-day uh, a trip, which would take you down to the South Exumas. 25-day trip. I don't suggest you go south of, of Stanley. Uh, so anyway, that just gives you something to think about. And again, I've got a hard copy of all that. Now to enter the Bahamas. It really is, of all the more, I, I found it uh, uh, very easy. Now COVID has complicated this. And the uh, first couple of things on here <coughs> involve getting a test and uh, getting a health visa. Um, I, you know, our goal is to go to the Bahamas uh, again next year, and these COVID, these regulations are going to change. I don't know if you have a, a vac, if you're vaccinated, that might be. I don't know. So I wouldn't, unless you're planning on leaving in the next uh, week, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in this. You are going to need your passports, and you're going to need your either your Coast Guard document if you're if you're doc, if you documented or your vote uh, registration. They do have an online customs process now, and they've given you the link for that. And for uh, boats under 34 feet, I think it is, which the Rossford is on, it's going to cost $150. First time in went, it was $75. Uh, but they, they know a good thing when they get it. But the <laughs> permit uh, gives you the fishing license, and a your covers your departure tax for up to three people. And then, uh, if you are confused, I mean, you can do, fill this out online, but if you have problems, you can all, the captain of the boat can always go ashore. And uh, um, that's, you know, when we got to Bimini, all I stayed on the boat and I went up to customs. And then, uh, also, uh, if any of you follow the boat gallery, the boat gallery, um, it's a site that a couple uh, uh, run. That are sailors. For, they have a, some modules for the Bahamas. It's thirty-nine dollars in total. If you want to pay that, and they'll go through everything. And something that doesn't show up on here is uh, you can also bring your pets. So I think it's seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. One piece of advice when you check in: there's a lot of uh, belligerent people who, when they, they feel like you know they own the planet. You check in there, and uh, you just, it, uh, I suggest that you mind your manners. I've seen it happen. You, and you, if they say one person off the boat, they mean one person off the boat. That doesn't mean your dog or your wife and go do with the dog or none of that. You go in and you check in, first thing you're going to know, you're on island time. They take, it's like, it's like watching ice cream melt. It just, you just stand there, and the minute you raise your voice, the minute you get out of the uh, line, say, hey, will you hurry up? Do it. I don't know. The guy comes in there, a man will walk up to you and tell you, cool running, so just cool, just mind your manner. And if you say anything to him, your next visit is the hoose cow right around the corner. So, all I'm saying is it's a whole different thing. They don't care where you come or go. Just, just, just don't be an ugly American. Man. Yeah, uh, there have been some ugly Americans for sure. 
Uh, we've had nothing but wonderful experience. Uh, we, we were walking around Alice Town, and three times someone stopped and said, can I give you a ride? And it, actually, one of them was raining, and we said yes. And um, just very friendly uh, uh, people, but uh, you're right. You, you, we're in a foreign country. We want to do this stuff. So uh, um, this is the Bahamian flag. Uh, uh, when you get there, uh, you should hoist the quarantine flag, the L flag. And then here's a Bahamian courtesy flag. And uh, our first trip, we couldn't get one of these, so we flew this, which was fine. But that's the, the one that's required uh, or uh, customary. And then this is us uh, in Bahamas. And I will say, uh, at the end of our trip, uh, that flag was pretty tattered. <laughs> Much worse than your American flag. <laughs> So, two key questions. Where do you depart from? And when do you cross the Gulf? And again, you see on this picture, you, Gulf Stream is going north. Typically, uh, two to three knots of current. And it will begin, you know, on average, five to ten miles off the Florida coast and uh, be about uh, 50 miles wide. And uh, my uh, depth meter has a temperature, a water temperature gauge, and it's interesting looking at the water temperature because when the temperature shoots up, you're in the Gulf Stream. And uh, we, I think the difference when we crossed last was about 40 degrees. So where did it depart from? Let's see what it's in Okay. In my mind, uh, the Fort Lauderdale area is too high up to cross, unless you were going to go to West End. And that's something I'm not advocating, but a lot of people do that, particularly if they're going to go to the Africans. A Miami departure is generally fine, but I wouldn't recommend doing it from the harbor because you've got cruise ship traffic and you just you don't know what it's going to be. So both our departures have been uh, from Biscayne Bay. The northern channels of Biscayne Bay are ideal uh, going to the Bahamas. And you know, depending on how fast you go, you may want to make a little adjustment for the current. Because um, uh, if you if you do head toward it like on Audubon, you're gonna you're gonna be north of that. Uh, but if you if going fast, it really has less of an impact. The other Biscayne channels are also fine. One of the nice things about uh, uh, the story uh, is you, is, uh, have any of you uh, been to, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, is it called Sticksville or? Stillsville. Stillsville, yeah. Stillsville, by no name Peak. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, to see these, I guess there are only five or six left now, but at one point, uh, you know, if you had your money to gamble and drink during uh, Prohibition, that's where you went, and there was a whole village out there, and uh, they're owned privately, and uh, I think when they finally fall in, uh, you, you, can't, you can't rebuild them. Uh, I think Key Largo is about as far south as you'd want to depart from. I mean, you'd have, obviously, the further south, the greater advantage you have uh, on the current. Um, and I just got a couple of uh, websites here. <coughs> for uh, both the state of Florida and also for Miami-Dade County on boat launches uh, and ramps. Uh, I will say uh, we've stayed at two marinas in, in Key Biscayne Bay. Uh, one was uh, further north, and I don't recall the name of those, but it was large and very nice. And then most recently in Homestead at uh, the Herbert Hoover Marina, and uh, Melissa and Mike Menace, and uh, it was just a, a wonderful marina, and you can you know, for a short trip, you can park your boat and trailer there, but uh, for longer trips, it gets a little pricey if you're going to be away for a moment. All right, now, I uh, did a little research on this question of when to go. And uh, this was just more interesting for me than anything, perhaps, but if you're, if you're not familiar with it, or maybe you are, with the Beaufort scale, which is was de developed uh, uh, a couple centuries ago uh, to measure wind speed and you, 
goes from 0 to 12. And with the description and the, the, the knots of wind that encompass that. <laughs> I just, this was on the Luthra. Uh, there was a, uh, an American family teaching at a school there, and their kids are quite independent. So he's on a skateboard, barefoot, and using his little sail to go pretty fast. <laughs> So, uh, this is a pilot chart that the, uh, um, the NOAA U.S. Coast Guard picks out. And in this, you can get it for any month. This is what's called the wind rose. And I'm just going to show you the example of this wind rose. So, first of all, the lines indicate the the amount of time or the percentage of time that the wind comes from that direction. And the feathers, like that's four feathers, <coughs> indicate this Beaufort scale. So that's the way the coastal chart is. So this weather rose shows, and I've written it out here, the rough percentage of the wind coming from that direction and what the force is. And these are all force tens except that's the force three. So uh, I just thought that was kind of a little interesting. So then I looked at them for every month. So what I've done here is I looked at December to May. <clears throat> and what I've said here is these are different uh, wind patterns. So if the wind is from the northwest, the north, or the northeast, and it's equal to or greater than force 3, should you cross? Absolutely no. If it's from the west, southwest, or south, equal to or greater than force 5, should you cross? No. If it's from the east, southeast, at force 4, should you cross? Maybe. You're going to have to look at what the local conditions are. Other situations, you likely could cross. <clears throat> so you see the percentages and how they change. <clears throat> In terms of Definitely not crossing 50% of the time until you get to March. You should not be crossing. And if you add maybe in that, which is maybe yes, maybe no, 80% in December, 90% in January, 90% in February, 80% in March, and then 70% in April. So the, as is Florida, I guess, as you get warmer months, the water conditions uh, and the wind conditions calmed down quite a bit. So, our first time we went to the Bahamas in December, came back in January. Second time we went to the Bahamas in January, we came back in March. You can, it's doable, but you've got to pick that weather window. Now, weather sources, uh, the, uh, I've contributed to Marv's, uh, he's getting on in years, but he still does his work. But I, I just wanted to share, and this is, there are other sites out there you can pay for Chris Parker, and he'll tell you whether you should go or not. But uh, Marv has all these buoy reports and what have you, and a typical, well, this is from his guidelines. You, you know, he says, we're going to the Bahamas, the end component. If there is N in the wind direction, do not make the crossing unless the wind is under 10 miles an hour and the wind direction is out of the east, northeast, or west, northeast. Uh, before you cross, always look at the local weather. Um, he has a number of sites here, and he talks about you can rent an EPER uh, if you don't own them yourself. And then this is just uh, one of his charts, which I, I thought was pretty well set up. It shows, the arrow shows a wind direction, and you can see what the sustained wind is, or what is the gust, and also the wave height. So the, the wind may be fine, but the wave height, maybe because of a leftover storm, might not be good. So that's a good source. And another thing that uh, we enjoyed a lot is looking at uh, uh, the wind forecast, the also get wave forecast from Windy. And uh, this one you probably can't tell, but this is just for March 2nd. I was looking at it. It shows you the, um, this is Florida here. 
the, the wind is from the south, and the color is blue, which is like under uh, five knots. Would be Perfect. <laughs> uh, here's for three seven. Winds out of the north. That green color is somewhere in the 20 knot range. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, you can get the same information on the on base. Uh, again, there are other apps out there too, but they're just too to be used. And that's it. And I. A, a thumb drive that he's going to be able to show us um, his his improvements. Jesse, do you mind texting your friends? Sure, I got it. Um, if you guys can just stick around for a little bit, we have something um, about to happen. But I want to give you a funny story while we're waiting on that. Um, and Peter, if you want to get your thumb drive, do you mind if he uses your computer? No, no that'd be fine. You can get no, ready to go. Oh, he has a lot And I just wanted to tell you a funny story. You guys were all talking about the swimming pigs. Well, once my father used to drag us through the islands every summer, three weeks. Oh my God, we hated it because we had to leave our friends behind while my father drug us through this set of islands or that set of islands or whatever. I, I regret hating it then because, oh gosh, what a privilege it was. But in Staniel Key, where the swimming pigs are, very close to that is something called Thunderbolt Grotto. And that's where they made the John. Bond, a James Bond movie called uh, Thunderball. Well, one summer, w while we were being drugged through these islands, they were filming that movie. And they lost some of the trained dolphins. So over the VHF, they're trying to recover these dolphins. And they said, if you see these dolphins, tap on the side of your boat, and they know to come. Well, after that, man, we were banging on our boat. It didn't matter where we were all the way home. So I just thought I'd share that one with you. What did you get? Good dolphins? We never, oh, those, we never found the train dolphins. And I don't even remember whether they ever found the train dolphins. But back in the day, um, you know, the Bahamas was a little more pristine than it is now. I went over... Um, a couple years ago, I took my Rossi over, and it was very sad to me to see all these mega yachts out of Miami. And they're doing a lot of the, who's seen Below Deck? The TV show on these big charters. And unfortunately, what they're doing is the big um, fireworks celebrations for their guests on the beach, and they're leaving all that trash behind on the beach. And uh, um, to me, it's very sad from what those islands used to be. Um, and now also if you go in the winter, um, like Hopetown, all those Canadians that come down every summer, well they have a pecking order of who's allowed to have what mooring ball and this and that. And to me that's like, wait a minute, those are my island, what are you talking about? But, so I don't go in the winter, which is also the windiest time. It is. Yeah. And and the only thing I'd say is that you know, we weren't there to spend the whole winter in one place. Right. Yeah. So Cruising around. Hopetown is not a place that we would, you know, we might pass through that we're not in. Same with Georgetown. Right. right. So we didn't have any of that. Um, we just had a lot of friendly people. And, and, and the other thing is just, I mean, Mars weather is great, but us Bahamians, we have a rule of thumb. If there's an N in it, you don't go. Unless it's an N0. And you check both sides of the, the weather. And that, well, that was just our rule of thumb. Um, but anyway, we do have a very special occasion today. Somebody is turning 83. So if I can all get you together to sing a happy birthday to George. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. And amazingly, thanks to well, thank you all, people. You know, reaching 83. Some of you are more so good. But reaching 83, you know, and having experienced all the things in my lifetime up until 83. And what's nice about reaching it is that I can still, still come and meet great people like you and enjoy company with people like you and hopefully in the future years enjoy more of your company. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. I have a Maggie. Who is Nagi? Where's Nagi? Right here.
Thank you, Nagi. We got a cake to an island. Does yeah. <laughs> so anybody would like some cake that's going to be at the back here? I've got one question for you, Bill. So. Yeah. You hear about the problem with fresh water. Being able to have drinking water, fresh water is going to What do you find out that? Yeah, so... Um, what, so the question is about uh, fresh water. So, because uh, I know on a, a low side version you get like a 27 gallon tank, and a high side is about a 40 gallon tank. <clears throat> when we took out our uh, marine head and put in a composting toilet, I put it in another uh, 40, 50 gallon water platter. So we had 80 gallons uh, ourselves.